Hello and welcome, this is Roofmonger, and in this guide you'll find 5 tips for beginners in Soul Calibur 6. Now you can kind of consider this video guide a companion guide to the 7 essential tips video uh, we already made, and uh, there will be a link to that one at the end of this video if you haven't seen it already, so check that one out, because hey, there's some good stuff in there. Uh, but for now, let's just start with tip number 1 here, and this is tip number 1 with the biggest bullet you can imagine. So we're in training mode as you can tell here. Uh, and a lot of people seem to not know about this one here, but in training mode, yo, uh, go over to training settings, go to combat lessons, and literally everything you could ever want is right here. Um, want to know about Aswell? Boom. Here's everything you need to know about Aswell. Here's all sorts of stuff. Uh, you know, here's <laughs> all sorts of combos, all sorts of technique, all sorts of thought process. Uh, you want to learn the basic stuff of the game? Here's everything you can think of. Now, why this isn't its own section on the main screen, I have no idea. But, like, look at this. It tells you everything you need to know. Uh, and it's just so much stuff here. Uh, there's no way I could cover everything that's in here, you know, in one video. It's not, like, at least two hours long. And a lot of videos, honestly, I'll make in the future will probably cover things that are in here you could read right now. So, if you're looking just for stuff to learn, yo, it's all right here in this section here. All you gotta do, training mode, combat lessons, it's all here. Uh, once again, this really should be on the main screen. Namco uh, at least has this. You know, Tekken 7 didn't have anything to teach you how to play at all. And uh, in this version, while it's great they have it, it's like kind of hidden away in training mode when it should be on the main menu, but whatever. Right here, this is all the stuff you need to know. So, if there's any question you have about the game... Yo, it's all here. The character-specific stuff you want to learn. Uh, you know, Siegfried, boom, here's a bunch of Siegfried stuff. They'll help you get your, uh, you know, ball rolling. Once again here, training mode, combat lessons, everything you need to know about the game is basically right there, all splayed out and waiting to be read. For our second tip, we're going to talk about the concept of turns. So this is a long-standing concept in fighting games, and a bit more so in 3D fighters than anything else. So say we have the enemy here, he's just going to mash that A button, right? And, you know, there's nothing stopping him from just doing this forever, right? If I just keep blocking. However, if I attack, as you see here, it kind of, you know, beats him clean. Because he's not... While he will be able to block, he's not done recovering yet. So if I were to attack him during this period here, uh, he's not really able to kind of mash out the next move. Because it is my turn, not his. So... Generally speaking, this is going to be true across all moves in the game, with very few exceptions, although there are a few. Uh, any move in the game is negative. Doesn't matter if it's a single hit or a string or whatever, by the time you are done your attack string, or a single attack, or whatever you're going to do, uh, it is negative. Meaning, uh, you will recover before the enemy recovers. So, if you were both to hit the exact same button at the same time at that point, after the enemy has blocked, they will hit you before you will hit them because they have recovered first, meaning it is quote-unquote their turn. The only real way to have the aggressor take his turn after the enemy has already blocked their attack is if you hit them with a break attack, the big lightning attacks. So anything with the big lightning here, it'll effectively keep it your turn. So if you do this attack, they block, and then you just like mash out your next button, and they mash out their next button, uh, you will win. For the most part, generally speaking, once you have successfully blocked, it is now your turn and you can go for whatever you're going to go for. Now that said, if the enemy just says this real quick and then, you know, they do it again and you're going for some, like, massive wind-up attack here, uh, you know, that isn't really particularly fast, right? Yeah, you're going to lose out. Uh, you know, even if they have, quote-unquote, lost their turn, if they do something quick and you do something very slow, well, they're still going to smack you. But uh, it is a very key concept of the flow of battle of once you have successfully defended, the reward will sometimes be a punish, depending on the move block. But generally speaking, the overall reward is, okay, they have done what they're going to do and you have weathered the storm. So now it is your turn to do what you are going to do. So for our third tip, and this is kind of directly following the concept of turns, uh, it's just the attacks themselves. So A, no, it's your horizontals, B is your verticals, and K is your kicks. And kicks are pretty unique depending on the character. Uh, and I'm here to tell you that, as a general rule, A attacks are faster than B attacks. So obviously you can find, like, you know, an A attack with a lot of wind-up that'll be slower than a fast B attack overall, yeah, sure, whatever. Uh, but for the most part, A attacks are faster than B attacks, especially for, your, like, your basic swings uh, for most of the cast. 
So we're going to have Ivy here set to do a basic attack string, just her double A. So as you see here, she is going to do her double A attack and then she's immediately going to block. So smacked us good right there. And we went for the BB and we can't punish her. Now let's try AA. So the AA is just slightly faster. So while she can block the standing B, she cannot recover in time to block the standing A. And also kick, just so you know, for in this specific case. But this is going to be true for a lot of characters that just your standing A and A together are going to be faster than just your basic B and B attack. So this is not going to hold true. Uh, I'm tested against every single character, but it's just generally the rule of the game. So this is an example is just showing you a guaranteed punish. So with the basic A attack, I have a guaranteed punish where the basic B attack will not give me a guaranteed punish. So generally speaking, if you are blocking moves that you think might be a little more negative than usual, you know, feel it out first just by doing basic A attacks, right? Because generally speaking, once again, they're going to be your fastest things. Uh, certain characters, you know, it's a little weird. They have like weird edge case moves that are faster than their basic A's, like say Astroth or Ivy. Uh, they have, you know, special moves that are actually faster than their basic attacks, but for the most part, your basic A is your single fastest attack. And some characters, the kick is tied depending on who you are. But yeah, just keep in mind the overall speeds are not equal in any way shape or form and for the most part your vertical attacks are going to be your slower attacks while your while your a attacks are generally speaking your faster attacks for our fourth tip we're going to talk about uh playing the stage you're on uh so right here i'm nightmare and siegfried has me up against the ring you know oh what a precarious position until you know it isn't uh, <laughs> You really got to be aware of the stage, everything, uh, all of his foibles, and also the characters you're up against. So while obviously, you know, having your back against the ring is not a good thing, you know, because uh, you can very easily get knocked out and get ringed out and all that kind of stuff. Or, you know, much the same if your back's against the wall. Uh, you have to just play and keep in mind what's going on. Uh, if you get knocked down, say, right by the uh, ring, uh, you know, take some time and just roll your way out. You might take a couple hits, you might take a little bit of damage, but, you know, it's a better chance, uh, you know, to win the match still, taking a little bit of damage and getting better positioning versus just instant losing by getting ringed out. Uh, but once again, you gotta really watch what characters, like a character like Nightmare or a character like Siegfried, uh, they actively don't care <laughs> uh, about, you know, uh, their positioning. And for characters like these two, uh, having their back to the wall is just an opportunity to get you killed because uh, you might have them in the ring as we showed let's show an example here in the actual corner against the wall so here we are our back against the wall you no know, obviously nominally a very disadvantageous situation uh but since we you know know the stage we know what our characters are capable of we can turn this seemingly big disadvantage into a big advantage and all of a sudden we got a nice little combo right uh because uh nightmares Back toss just tosses them right into the wall and has some guaranteed damage and some nice little chunk of damage. So this is what I mean about playing the stage. You gotta be aware of just more of the concept like being against ring it bad, being against wall bad. You know, you gotta take advantage of wall combos, ring out setups, you know, uh, characters like a nightmare, I'm just really blaming the point, just he's a really good example of this, right? Uh, not to say he's the only example, because a lot of characters can do stuff like this. Uh, they can turn disadvantageous situations into advantageous situations and so on and so forth. So keep in mind the stage you are on and uh, just things like, you know, some combos, maybe you sacrifice a little bit of damage to get a little more forward momentum pushing towards the ring out, right? Because even the best of players, even the most stone cold of players, they're going to sweat a little bit when they're up against the ring. Because it doesn't matter, you know, if it's a light tap, you know, one ring out is the end of the round. Doesn't matter if they were working on a perfect beforehand because all they need to do uh, to be shoved over the edge and that's it. That's it. You know, it's game over, right? So... Once again, just, uh, you know, one more time, just to belabor the point, really pay attention to the stage you're on, be uh, attention to your positioning, because in this game, uh, more than, you know, a lot of 3D fighters, positioning matters so much. Wall combos are, generally speaking, the most devastating kind of combo in this game, and obviously a ring out's more damaging than any combo possible, so play the stage. And our final tip is about the guard impact itself. So you're probably aware of it. It's one of the signature moves of the Soul Calibur franchise. Uh, the guard impact is kind of a universal parry, repel, whatever you want to call it. Uh, when you do it, you blow back the other guy. It's universally done by hitting forward and the guard button. And it beats highs, it beats mids, it beats lows, it beats throws, it beats basically everything, right? Uh, the timing window is quite short. 
So you gotta really believe in it, because uh, if you too early, too early, you know, you're gonna get hit. If you're too late, hey, well, you just got hit. Uh, so you have to have some precision timing. So first thing that I mentioned real quick here is uh, you notice my guard gauge is actually kind of freaking out a bit. Because uh, if you go for guard impacts and whiff, you actually will hurt your guard gauge, just so you know. Uh, it's a newly added feature, because guard impacts are actually quite a bit stronger in this game than they usually are, considering they get all the options and it's only on one input. So this is kind of uh, one weakness of the guard impact now uh, in this game. Now another thing to mention here is not all guard packs are created equal. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set the enemy Yoshimitsu to just kind of do a basic attack here. So he's going to do his diagonal B attack here. So we guard impact, you know, you got to guard impact correctly, you know, don't be like me and whiff. And then we get a punish, right? All well and good. So what happens now we're going to try to do something else. So we try this and hey, he got to block it. So once again, as we mentioned earlier in the video, how A's are faster than B's, that's a nice little example there. So we got an AA punish, but we could not connect with a standing B. Now that's off his down forward B. So let's switch it over to a different move. So now he's set to do his standing AA. So we're going to try to guard impact that again. And hey, that time that standing B worked. So what changed here? How come we could get it on that move and we could not get it on the previous move? Well, what's happening here is this. Uh, there's actually three different levels of guard impact, as in the blowback uh, the enemy receives when you guard impact them. And generally speaking, the faster the move, the more the blowback is going to be. So a slower move gets a little bit of blowback, uh, and a very quick move, because it's much more difficult to guard impact correctly, will have a larger amount of blowback. So you can get basically bigger combos off faster moves than you could off uh, you know, a very predictable, very easily guard impacted move. So. If a move has like, you know, wind up for days or something, you're only going to get something simple off of it versus if it's like a wicked quick move, then you're going to get a much bigger punish. Another note here, if you're not aware about guard impacts is you can guard impact guard impacts no matter what. So in this situation here, like I'm trying to guard, I'm not going to be able to guard after I get guard impacted, right? As we just showed, right? But I can guard impact his guard impact. So you are allowed a measure of defense while you're doing this. So this comes kind of the guessing game of, okay, he has, you know, some guaranteed damage coming his way. Uh, so am I going to go for, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, guard impact again, try to steal my turn back? Or is he going to hit me or whatever? And keep in mind too, universally, the A plus B break attack will basically get you a full combo on anyone tries to guard impact. So if I do this and I guard him back and instead of him trying to hit me, he instead goes for his guard break here. Oh my god, I'm going to need a lot of damage for, you know, getting called out. And also, one thing to note here. So after you get guard impacted, you know, you can guard impact back, yes. But you can also reverse a ledge back. As you can see here. So that's a newly added feature. So you can also reverse a ledge. And that also carries, you know, the same risk of any break attacks going to absolutely crush you after you get guard impacted. So, you know, don't match him. Plus, you know, the whole sidestep thing and all that. But yeah, there's a lot of layers to guard impact. So... Uh, depending on the move that you guard impact, you get, uh, you know, varying levels of punish from a very small punish to, depending on a very big blowback, you can get a straight launch punish to a big combo, right? Um, but you're not fully down and out, and that's kind of the guessing game, because you are always allowed to guard impact their guard impact, and, you know, kind of, uh, go forward from there and try to steal turns back. And, of course, then that opens up the whole guessing game. Well, if I know you're going to do that, then I'm going to do my break attack and get into a really big combo on you and probably rip off, like, 40% of your health bar. But, yeah, the guard impact is one of the signature uh, aspects of the Soul Calibur series. It's just as good as it's ever been in this game. And, you know, make use of it. And also be aware of some of its foibles, some of its weaknesses, because break attacks really beat it real bad now in this game. And but it can save your butt in a high pressure situation when you're in the blender, you don't know what to do because once again, doesn't matter if it's high, middle, low, or a throw, guard impact will beat all offensive options except for those pesky break attacks. So that is the end of this video. Once again, uh, we already have another tips video up on top of this one, so please check it out because I'm going to cover quite a few things there. Uh, but yeah, Soul Calibur, it's a game with a lot of depth, a lot of stuff to figure out. I know a lot of people, either you've never played a Soul Calibur game before, or you're a lapsed fan, you haven't played since Soul Calibur 2, 3, or 4, or something like that. So yeah, a lot to get back into, a lot to take in. And hey, you know, figure it out, have fun, it's a great game. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well. Go out and play some Soul Calibur.